Hey everybody, it's Jason and I'm joined with Jeremy from J. Raffinan Photography out here at Stanley's Los Angeles Comic Con to do a camera lens battle. So today our contenders are the latest and greatest 24-70 f2.8 lenses from Sony and Canon. And the reason why Jeremy's here today is because he'll be shooting with both of these cameras, the Sony a7R2 and the Canon 5D Mark III. So let's go ahead and have you introduce yourself to our viewers. Sure. My name is Jeremy, and I'm a professional photographer. I've been shooting since 2009 with the Canon lineup exclusively. And uh, I'm a regular Anime Expo photographer, one of the main photographers for the past four years. It's really exciting for me to see how the uh, Canon stacks up with the Sony, because I've heard a lot of great things about the technology in the Sony and how it plays just as nicely, if not better, than a full frame or just even the Canon lineup in general. So I'm really excited to be here. All right, cool. It's going to be a great experience. So hopefully this will give you guys uh, a good idea how well the Sony a7R2 and the 24-70 G Master performs with a Canon as a benchmark camera. So let's go ahead and capture some events. Sounds good. Let's do it. Hey Scorpion, excuse me. Hi, can I get your picture? Sure. Sweet. I'm going to get a picture of your eyes because they look really good. So I'm going to get really up close. Nice. And good. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's a really cool advertisement of Stanley's LA Comic Con. Right there in the shot. It's really cool. So far, I'm really liking this camera. It's super fast. And it, it's, it's really easy to capture images, whether it's from, from the LCD screen, which I'm totally not used to with my Canon. And I like how the viewfinder is electronic, so you can see the images as they are about to be taken, as opposed to the Canon where you're kind of guessing. Uh, it's really different, so it's a good difference. All right. Awesome. Count of three. One, two, three. Excellent. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. It's a little bit focused on her arm. If the eye is more apparent on the cosplayers, yep. go ahead and switch this takedown yep. and then hold this button. If you, point that, if you point that button, do you see like a little dot on my what? eye? What? Yeah. Yeah, so that, no gets, that gets the eye in focus. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me just get this shot like this. Oh, beautiful. Nice. That was so quick. So it, if you don't want the eye autofocus, just switch this tick back up. Okay. And it'll get that general focus again. Oh, yeah. I do like the eye focus though, because that's generally what a lot of cosplay photographers get is the most important thing is the eyes anyway. And so I'm surprised that this has something like that. Yeah. For Canons, for, I think in Canons, it's just whatever points you can, that are made available and you have to train yourself to use one of those focus points to capture the eyes. So this is a really cool feature. Excellent. Beautiful, thank you. The biggest thing for me right now that I can tell is being able to adjust the focus points. And I think if I just practice enough, I should be able to move these around without thinking too much like I am right now. And so far, zone seems to be my favorite setting right now. All right, even better. All right, one, two, and three. Beautiful, thank you so much. Great job. <laughs> I just, I love this. I love the quality of this camera. 42 megapixels of clarity. And the color is amazing despite being indoors. And something I notice is that when I zoom into people, I notice that there's a little bit of a, de a delay which is normal, but I just have to catch myself so that I don't accidentally press another button to zoom in while it's zooming in. I mean, I'm used to having the Canons uh, zoom in only partially, and then you have to zoom in a little bit more to see more details. So this is really interesting and useful because I can see, uh, I can see details right off the bat at one-to-one -one scale. I'm assuming this is one-to-one -one scale off of the camera, so. All right, back into the fray, all right. Oh, aperture priority. Let's change that back to manual. And let's shoot at a shutter speed of about 250 because we have a lot of moving subjects right now. And it'd be useful to keep the shutter speed constant while adjusting the aperture as needed. Based on how many people there are, what kind of lighting there is. <gasps> Overwatch! Ah! Sweet. Can you hold out the guns right at me? And then get a little bit closer as I'm going to do... There we go. Get a nice... Quick shot, there we go. Three, two, one. Excellent. Can I get a wide shot? Uh-huh. Just 
Casual, standing. Yep. All right. Three, two, one. Excellent. Thank you so much. Great job on your outfits. Thanks, <laughs> I'm going to come up real quick here. And well, nice and wide. Three, two, one. Nice. Thank you very much. Sometimes it's really helpful just to get down low. Not just to isolate everyone, but to get the lower, you know, they're on the ground. It looks a lot better than standing up getting this shot. So this is going to come out really good in post later on. Okay. Let me zoom in. We count of three. One, two, and three. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Great work on your outfit. Actually, I'm going to get a really quick overall shot from a cosplayer that is actually in the area. This is kind of like what we do at Anime Expo all the time. We don't necessarily need to get asked them explicitly for the image, but if the shot looks right, it kind of looks like it's more of a contextual, sh contextual shot rather than a straight cosplay portrait sh shot, but it does still profile Stanley's LA Comic Con in the background. Eh, it's a little cut off though, but oh no. It's a nice test shot. I feel like when I'm zooming in and out, and I could be wrong, but zooming is kind of like the opposite direction for Sony's, whereas Canon's is the other way. So I find myself, when I'm shooting at 70 millimeters, I'm always extended out all the way, and I have a tendency to want to zoom in, or zoom out, I guess, I should say, to put the lens back in, but I'm going in the opposite direction, so I've got to get used to that. I'm going to be right here. There we go. Nice. Thank you very much. If you change this to autofocus continuous, switch it to the eye autofocus. It actually tracks the eye as well. It does. Whoa. Wow. That's like, that's, I feel like I'm cheating. But at the same time, that's really good technology. That's really good technology. I also want to show you another thing too. And then go ahead and just like move around. And it'll track your entire subject. Whoa! Oh my goodness. I'd rather just keep it on that. Oh, that's just that's ingenious. Yeah. This makes it so much faster to shoot. At least for focus and reco recomposing. Oh my goodness. There we go. And excellent. Thank you so much. Oh, so cool. Oh. Did you try the lock-on thing? Yep. Oh, cool. Nothing but lock-on. All right. <laughs> Guess I, we found your new favorite feature. I think I did. Three, two, one. Nice. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Nice. Three, two, one. Excellent. Thank you so much. Great work on your outfits. All right. So now we're going to shoot with both the 5D Mark III and the Sony A7R II. So we're going to give you guys some nice comparison shots. So let's go. All right. Let's get started. Excuse me, Captain. Can I get a photo of you, please? We're gonna do two cameras. This is gonna be the first one. It's gonna be the same thing. Nice. Shadow yeah, three. One, two, three. Excellent. Nice. Thank you. Okay, three, two, three, two, and one. Excellent. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Whoa. Whoa. That's Whoa. a big difference right there. Whoa. I don't know how that's gonna come out in post, but this yeah. is a lot more colorful. The it's focus. Wider. A little brighter, but the focus for each of them is spot on. Just look at the, the, the background right here. The blur. Yeah. yeah. They look really good. Okay. Wow. Nice. Moving on. Nice. Okay. Three, two, one. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. The ergonomics definitely really feel the ergonomics is I feels better because yeah. it's it's more hefty around the body. For the Canon? For the Canon. Okay. For the Sony, it's a little bit smaller, so I'm kind of crunching my hands a little bit oh, just to get the shots. Hands. But yeah, I think for for, for, for your really type, nice, yeah. yes, definitely. I'm going to do two cameras of the same shot, okay. so there we go. Camera three, one, two, three. Can awesome. Yes, please. Thank you so much. Oh, it's a smart way to store cards. Once. Actually, let's uh, let's move around this way. It's a little, it's a little bright. Nice. One, two, three. Excellent. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. <laughs> In terms of like um, focus setting, like what what are you doing differently with both of these cameras? For the Sony, um, I'm still using a single a single point. 
and I'm fo focusing in the center to do to take advantage of the continuous shooting. So uh, the continuous focus. So when I recompose, um, it's always in focus on the eyes. Uh, so it's just one single shot or one single button press. For the Canon, I have it so that my focus point goes around as I, as I need to because there's a dial pad. So I adjust the focus point to the top where the eyes are manually and I take a shot. Which one is quicker, would you say? Um, it's, for the most part, this because I'm more, the Canon is a lot f uh, faster simply because I'm used to moving the focus point around manually. Uh, the Sony is kind of hit or miss. Like when it's spot on, it's super fast. It's faster than the Canon. But sometimes I'm not getting the focus properly and I have to wait for it to find the eyes or find my focus point. So I think that's just, it, I'm not sure if it's user error, but uh, we'll experiment with that setting more. Cool, awesome. Let's carry on. All right, we're gonna do two cameras here. One, two, and three. And then, yep, sweet. One, two, and three. Excellent, thank you so much, appreciate it. Okay, one right here, please. And one more with this camera. Beautiful, thank you so much. Excellent, great. Oh, hi, can I get a photo of you? Nice. Okay, three, two, one, and this camera. What if you run out of Doritos? You have plenty of Doritos, right? Nice. Okay, three, two, one. Every time. All right. Thanks. Just everything here. Oh, cat bus. Can I get a picture of cat bus, please? Ah! Okay, let me bump the ice a little bit because it's super dark in here. Okay, three, two, one, cheese. One more. One more here. Three, two, one, cheese. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> nice. Let's get a shot of this really awesome typewriter. And that awesome beep to make sure. Wow, wow that was quick. Even if I have it at 1 50th of a second, it's very quick. It just it just feels like it's at 1 250th of a second. You say 1 30th of a second? What's this? 1 50th right now. Uh -huh, 1 50th? Yeah, it feels like it was a lot faster, like over a 100th of a second. Wow. My can, it feels like it's like a clunk clunk. It's noticeable. Nice. Very noticeable. This I can keep on 1 50th of a second. Get a little side profile. We don't have to get the entire sh shot of the body. And that is gorgeous. This makes it so fast to take pictures casually and without fumbling with too many settings. 150 for the second and F4. That chrome stormtrooper looks awesome. Face detection also works here too, but the ISO is a little bit low, so we'll bring that back up to 640 and. Beautiful. Can you get a shot of you like this with your back because it says Daft Punk on it? And it just looked back towards me? Nice. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Wow. Oh, do you have time for a quick photo real quick while no one's around? Cool. Excellent. Three, two, one. Good. Thank you so much. Great work. Excuse me, Cap, you have time for a photo? Best version of Captain America. <laughs> All right. Okay, count of three. One, two, three. Good. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. So far, both cameras are producing really good light at ISO 640. I'm not usually used to shooting that low. But when, it, when we bring it up in post, there's going to be a lot more detail retained as opposed to bumping it up to a high ISO. So these hallway shots are going to look really good. All right, count of three. One, two, three. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Three, two, one. Nice. Thank you so much. All right, three, two, and one. Nice. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. One thing I do like about this that I notice as well in the canons is that this is this takes really good uh, dynamic range of the shadows and the highlights, and so it captures a lot of detail. And I can imagine that with such a higher megapixel count of 42, uh, there's a lot to play around with in post. So I'm looking forward to that. One thing to always keep in mind when yeah. you're shooting is 
there's going to be a lot of background distraction, but as long as you kind of line up the lines, line up the lights, you can have people coming at you from left and right, it'll be fine, as, but I find comfort in symmetry. And so when you line up your subjects kind of with everything around you, it actually comes out really good because the activity makes the picture a lot more exciting. And it also adds depth as well. So that helps a lot, especially if you're doing a lot of event photography. You want to have everyone in the shot. You don't want to isolate everyone all the time. Uh, I think for the most part, the Sony uh, tracks a lot better with the optical stabilization. So even if I'm shooting at 1 60th of a second, I'm getting really nice sharp photos. Uh, but when it comes to the 5D Mark III, I just shot a picture of a Beetlejuice cosplayer and the vertical shot, more in focus, but the horizontal shot of her just zoomed in a little bit more, it is a little blurry, it's a little shaky. So uh, I'm gonna try to be a little bit more stable this time around and see later on how they, can, how they stack up, so. Okay. <laughs> Three, two, one. Thank you so much. <laughs> I also noticed that as I'm taking pictures for the Sony, I really only have to use, uh, I only have to take one photo actually. Uh, it seems like with the Canon, just instinctively, just, just so I know I got the, the focus and the sharpness right, that I'm taking more than one photo at a time of the same subject. So it's definitely for the Sony, I feel like I can shoot a little bit faster. Uh, as for the Canon, I feel like, I, now I understand, I think um, it takes a little bit more effort to, to get the shot. And maybe I need to adjust the way I shoot on my Canon now that I've shot on the Sony uh, to be a little bit more in focus and sharp on the single shot so I don't waste all my, my images. So I don't have to cull as much. Okay, one, two, three. Good. Thank you so much. We're gonna get a shot of the overall of the, the, um, the lobby here. And for this one, I'm just going to use the screen as I take the photo. Looks good. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thanks for your help. Okay. One, two, three. Excellent. Thank you so much. All right, cool. So we're out here at the Marriott where um, we're going to look at some of Jeremy's photos. Yeah, sure. Let's show uh, some of the, my favorites from the Sony. All right. All right. Over here we have the first one is of a cosplayer dressed up as Scorpion. Eyes like super sharp and focused, right? Yep. Really clear, really clear. And this is one of the first shots I took of, of the morning. Okay. So right out the gate, the Sony performed really well. Nice. All right, Vincent Valentine. Vincent Valentine. I liked this one because uh, it, partly because of the character being like kind of a more darker, moodier character. Uh -huh. The despite it being bright outside, I like the shadows that were cast on him. So very cool. So why I chose that photo. Moving on to the third one. Wow. Looks like Rebel Rebel steampunk outfits. Mm -hmm. Really good demonstration of the different the uh, colors going on. Mm -hmm. um, the sharpness and all the details yeah. on their outfits, especially the vests and the glasses too, those really shine for the Sony. Nice. The fourth okay. one, Again. Final Fantasy VII. Nice. So, the uh, symmetry you were talking about earlier. Yes, right? definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, this one did really well in the exhibit hall. It's a lot darker in there, but the Sony captured a lot of the, the fine shadows uh, in, the, in the blacks of their outfits. Nice. And you can still see kind of the reflections in their eyes as well. So. Okay. Lots of good action happening in the background. And number five. This was actually a League mm -hmm. League of Legends cosplay that was happening right outside the Staples Center. Uh, really good, really sharp, uh, really good color with the hair going on. Um, and she also had a good pose for us as well. Like yeah. In terms of like, you know, Sony, like what, what focusing mode you were using that you found that works best for you? I believe is the one with the... Uh, the zones. The zone? Yes. The zones helped a lot because, like my Canon, I'm able to adjust the zoning okay. uh, on the fly. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the continuous focus is what I used to uh, basically center, in the, fo center okay. in the, the focus in the center. Okay. And then um, as I was back focusing, I was able to track that focus no matter and, and readjust the compose. All right. Very cool. That's the one yeah. where it forms a box on your subject and you're yep. able to track around? It's super useful. Yes. All right. Very cool. One of the things was uh, uh, slow focusing sometimes in um, continuous AF or continuous autofocus. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it was hunting a little bit too much for it. So mm -hmm. I feel like if you went to single, okay. single shot focus, mm -hmm. 
uh, it would be a little bit easier and a little bit faster. And sometimes maybe being new to the menu system, mm -hmm. uh, if I could find how to change the zoning or to change the type of focus points that I yeah. want yet, um, I think it would be a lot faster if I knew the menus. But that's just, that comes with time. Cool, mm -hmm. definitely, for sure. Yeah. All right, let's move on to some of the comparison shots that you did with the 5D Mark III and a Sony A7R II. All right. So over here. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you have the Canon top oh, yeah. fives? That's right. Oh, I'm so sorry. We should no, that's fine. No, let's look at the Canon top fives first. Sounds good. Starting with the Canon. Okay. All right. Got Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. Mm -hmm. uh, comparison to the the Sony's when I when I shot this, I noticed that there was a in the for the Canons a lot more contrast here. Mm -hmm. I think right out the gate. Like more contrasty with the 5D. With the 5D. Okay. Yes. And that could have been, I don't know, maybe it's the sensor. I do hear that the Canons have a little bit more contrast. Yeah, the Canon, I, I, you know, I hear a lot like Canon's color science is supposed to be like way better than like most of the cameras that are out there. Right, but mm -hmm. I, I do know based on experience that for Canons <clears throat> to compensate for that, uh, if, if having higher contrast kind of loses some of the details sometimes. Okay, okay. Uh, in the color. Mm -hmm. uh, this was my second favorite shot for the Canon. Yeah, I like uh, this one. Cat bus, great. always good, the family mm -hmm. together. Um, this was a very spontaneous shot. Very. Mm -hmm. This was one of our first shots walking into the exhibit hall for the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was really cool. You can see a lot of the shadow detail um, in the kids, uh, their faces in the cat bus, and then you can see a lot of the highlights around the, the parents. Mm -hmm. And so um, it was uh, good, good lighting overall, okay. despite uh, the low lighting. Kit this is, this is great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. Third one. Uh, nice Daft Punk. I actually like this shot when I was like, behind the scenes with you yeah it's really good really good eye thank you with, uh, thank you posing and all yeah, of that. yeah. sometimes uh, it's for cosplay shots you don't have to get like full frontal shots yeah, all the yeah. time it's always nice to see the details like the, the back where it says Daft Punk mm -hmm. all right the fourth one nice yeah. really awesome mm -hmm. uh, details uh, the LED light uh, spinning fan type of thing that shows start um, the headphones, the details in the uh, light. Yeah, 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 I yeah. see it, yeah. The details in the shoes and the, the apparatus around here. Mm -hmm. uh, really all came together, and the, the way the Canon captured it in, in the low light of the exhibit hall is mm -hmm. pretty good. No, nothing's blown out, you can see all the details yeah. uh, in all the whites over there. It's very so. clear, very sharp. Mm -hmm. And last That's but not that. least. Okay, very uh, cool. This is a shot that I chose because it's uh, it's an overall environmental shot. Uh, yeah. Based on my experience, I usually like to capture what's in the moment and not just cosplayers, not just uh, yeah. not just small things. And this is a really key moment because we have someone signing a poster. That's a big thing here at Los Angeles uh, uh, LA Comic Con. So yeah, oh, very cool. Yeah, I mean, like that's that's exactly why you know I'm having you in this video because you are a really awesome event photographer. Thanks. You know, you're able to fish out these moments and capture it right there. Thank you. So in terms of like both of these cameras, I mean like which one do you think performs the best in your opinion? For, I think I'm still used to the Canon in regards to being able okay. to, to set my focus points a lot faster. Okay. I think if I had more experience with the Sony and maybe discovered some shortcuts to, mm -hmm. to adjust the focus points on the okay. fly, the Sony would be very comparable. Okay. Especially awesome. when we talk about uh, the low light capability and the higher megapixel count for the mm -hmm. Sony. Uh, I think it's right up there with the Canon. I, it's almost it's almost a wash, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Let's see some of the comparisons. All right. Now, right off the gate for the Sony, you can see it's a little bit darker versus the Canon captures a little bit more brightness. Mm -hmm. But the Sony's, it feels like it has a little bit more of an even tone all around. Mm -hmm. The the Canon looks like they're both pretty sharp as well. You can see the little details on the uh, the, the lining of the coat in front. Right. You can see the you can see a little bit more detail in the gold. Right. I feel like maybe mm -hmm. it's because it's brighter. I think I think so. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah, but overall, if you can if you can adjust it in post, these are almost identical. Nice. The red does, and this is a classic Canon. The red is actually a lot more deeper. Okay. On Canon that's side what, than that's on what the Sony I've heard. Side. Peter Pan. Peter Pan, very similar. Mm -hmm. I just can't really tell. Again, we're looking at bright more a little bit brighter on the Canon out the gate than it is on the Sony. And these are very similar settings. Very as similar close, settings. As close as possible. Same ISO, aperture, shutter, uh, yes. and all of that, right? Okay. Uh, yes. Cool. The only difference I really think would be the auto white balance on both of them. Okay. So the Canon and the Nike, I think the, the Canon and the Sony do, do a pretty good job of capturing the white balance. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Let's, uh, let's skip over to this one because we saw Harley Quinn already. Okay. Very cool. For so this... Uh, yeah. This is, uh, the Canon seems slightly... Uh, bit out of focus but yes probably user error right there probably user error which 
kind of tech is a testament to the technology in the Sony. It's mm -hmm. a lot easier to capture the focus when it's, uh, especially with the available light in the hall. Okay, very cool. And that. Wow. Yeah, you know, I'm definitely I'm definitely seeing you know the Sony being <laughs> leaning a little bit more towards the greener tint. I see. Versus Canon, hmm. a little a little bit more of a coolish. Yeah, and the greens are more noticeable as opposed to if you look at the lightsabers. The lightsabers are almost the same color. Mm -hmm. um, the detail on their outfits okay. is about the same as, but yeah, for sure, mm -hmm. a little bit definitely a lot more greener. But if you play with it a little bit more, you could probably match things up. Yeah. Yeah, a little more balanced. Yep. Okay, yeah, one of our favorite shots of today. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know what, looking, just, you know, you pulling it up, it just looks like they're almost identical. I can't tell the difference between this one. Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I think the Sony shines in the highlights for this one better. Mm -hmm. So you can see a little bit more detail on her face right here, as uh -huh. opposed to here is a lot more shadowy. Oh. Okay. Wow. Very interesting. Yeah. Wow. All right. Maybe one more? Or two? Let's see. <laughs> Okay, all right, for, for all right, Mandiva. Ben. <laughs> Mandiva, all right. I can't Very tell, cool. I almost can't tell the difference. Man, literally no difference for this one. This one is, no. it's like it was shot from the same camera. Yep. Nice, nice. Huh. And maybe a, a shot of an object inside okay. the exhibit hall. Definitely. Let's see what the differences are. Deeper reds, mm -hmm. of course. Um, I, I like the tone of the, the wood mm -hmm. in this, on this, the more, one shot with the Sony. It's more natural. And there's less, again, the, the evenness of the Sony actually helps with the light around the keys as opposed to Canon, where it's kind of a little bit more washed out, so you can't see as much of the detail in the keys in the Canon. Mm -hmm. The viewfinder technology. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Canon leads more towards the, um, the prism, mm -hmm. whereas the viewfinder for the Sony is electronic. So Do you find yourself doing a little bit less guesswork? A little less guesswork. Okay. And being able to actually make more edits, I, I think see even the preview through the mm -hmm. viewfinder for the Sony is, I think is very advantageous, especially if you're in the heat of the moment uh, of taking photos. Um, some, some other factors, I would say the continuous autofocus with tracking the shot, mm -hmm. that, is, that is probably hands down one of my favorite aspects cool. of the camera. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, just the just the uh, d the different dials. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really easy to adjust uh, for exposure and for um, for exposure and uh, for shutter speed and for aperture. Mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting because for the Canons, it's one big dial, mm -hmm. and then there's another for your for your finger. Right. Versus the Sony's is kind of the uh, similar like two dial. There's like two similar dials. types of dials. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think it's a little bit more easily accessible. You're not working your thumb out <laughs> too long to, uh, too much just to get the right exposure that you want. Right. Very cool. Yeah. All right. So there's something that I have to ask, and there's a lot of people, um, a lot of my subscribers, a lot of commenters on my videos that are always saying, always complaining about the size of the 24 to 70 and the A7R2. What are your thoughts on the weight and size? Well, first of all, just for the lens itself, it's very natural for me because the 24 to 70 sizes for both cameras uh -huh. is about the same, uh, I guess, radius, if you will. Mm -hmm. So it felt natural in my hand to focus. Mm -hmm. uh, I did notice that I think for focusing on the Canon, I think it, I think zooming in, it's like one direction, and mm -hmm. the Sony's in the other direction. I have oh, to, okay. I have to verify that. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on to the bodies, though, uh, the Canon definitely has a little bit more. Um, I don't know, girth around okay. your hand. Okay. And of course, it depends on how big your hand is, right? So I feel like for the Sonys, there's a lot, uh, it's, it's, it's more blocky, mm -hmm. uh, and the grip is a little bit smaller as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's probably given because it's a mirrorless, mm -hmm. like full frame, right? Uh, the Canon itself, it wraps around my, my hand uh, really nicely. Mm -hmm. and uh, it, But also at the same time, I feel like the Canon feels a little more, I guess, <laughs> fluffier, if you will. Fluffy. <laughs> I don't know, for some reason, I feel Beefier? like this. Beef, beefier, but light, just lighter by a little bit. I feel like Sony, oh, is because it? I yeah, think you find so. it lighter. I think, okay. oh, yeah. that's interesting. Because uh, for having such a smaller body, I feel mm. like the the weight of it just it feels girthier. It feels like there's more packed into the smaller body, mm -hmm. so that I don't know the rigidness makes it feel like there's a little bit more weight to it in wow. the body itself. Okay. So, cool. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Yeah. Well, all right, Jeremy. Is there anything else you would like to add? Yeah, I noticed that in um, bringing both images or images from both cameras into post, there wasn't really a lot that needed to do. So straight out of the camera, these images looked really well, actually. Nice. Uh, apart from some minor uh, highlights and shadows and some exposure that I needed to do, if you basically gave me raw images um, and masked all the numbers and everything, <laughs> I almost wouldn't be able to tell which image I was editing. 
So right out of the camera, these images look great. Mm -hmm. uh, and I actually wouldn't mind shooting either. So. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, all right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this video has provided a lot of useful information if you guys are considering to buying any of these cameras or lenses. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and you can follow me on my social medias at Jason V Media and Jeremy. At Jay Raffidan. Cool. And uh, if you guys want to see more from Jeremy or, you know, these kind of lens battle, leave us a comment down below. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.